This is your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Thursday, March 28th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. A top official at the Caribbean Development Bank is concerned about the high levels of crime plague in Barbados. In fact, the bank's director of economics, Dr. Justin Ram, says one of the contributors appears to be the high level of youth unemployment here and the rest of the region. He made the comments as he addressed the 10th Domestic Financial Institutions Conference, where he revealed that on average, approximately one in four young people in the Caribbean are unemployed. When we look at this intentional homicide rate per 100,000 population in 2017, um, if the current trends in Barbados were to continue, we're actually moving up towards the um, the right side of this chart, and that's, and, that's, and that's not good. But it's all related back to this here. If young people don't have anything meaningful to do, then they're going to find something to do with their time, and we have to be paying particular attention to this. 19-year-old Kadeem O'Brien Clark has been charged with the murder of Graham Addison Novel. Clark of Johnson Road, Worksman St. George, is scheduled to appear before the Oystens Magistrates Court tomorrow. 22-year-old Novel, a local actor, also known as Short Boss, was shot and killed on February 16 at Rock Hall, St. George. He was recorded as the country's 11th murder for 2019. Meantime, yet another teenager has been remanded to prison in connection with gun and ammunition charges. 19-year-old Carl Leslie Hines Jr., of Lot 49 Lodge Crescent Lodge Hill St. Michael, allegedly had a firearm and four rounds of ammunition in his possession on March 27. He was not required to plead to the indictable charges. The accused, who appeared before Magistrate Douglas Frederick this afternoon, returns before the District A Magistrate's Court on April 25th. Everton Hero Holligan will lead the United Progressive Party for at least the next year. Holligan beat out Ambrose Grosner and Wayne Griffith for the top post following the completion of online voting to elect a new executive committee to serve from 2019 to 2020. The UPP's former chairman, Lynette Eastman, who did not seek re-election, was voted in as vice chairman. The remaining members of the committee comprised General Secretary Wayne Griffith, Assistant General Secretary Raquel Jilks, Chief Financial Officer Ambrose Grosner, Assistant Chief Financial Officer Edison Bino, and Rhea Riley as Public Relations Officer. The UPP says one of Holligan's goals will be to change the political landscape. Some economic news now. Barbados must review its business model if the financial services sector is to respond effectively to current challenges. That's according to Governor of the Central Bank, Cleveston Haynes, addressing the 10th Domestic Financial Institutions Conference at the Central Bank today under the theme, Repositioning Barbados' Financial Sector. Haynes stressed the importance of maintaining a robust and resilient financial system that supports economic growth. He says the central bank remains committed in helping the transformation and repositioning of the local financial services sector. I conclude that while our why has not changed, our what and our how are facing disruptive challenges, including the international, internationalization of services, technological advances and disruptions, consumer pressure for cheaper financial products, convenience and caring service, tough competition, the demand for simplicity in a world of complexity, and stricter international rules and standards. How can and must we respond to these circumstances? What must we do to reposition the sector? It's my belief that we must re-examine our business model. We need a model that reinforces and supports our purpose, our why, and addresses our how and our what. Also addressing the conference was Chairman of the Barbados Private Sector Association, Ed Clark. He believes small business operators can play a greater role in helping to grow the struggling Barbados economy. If we are going to grow this economy, the, the major players alone cannot do it. We have many, many small uh, players in Barbados who need to take some additional risks. Some are prepared to do so, but they need to have accessibility to that capital. And we need to encourage those risk takers, those entrepreneurs that, that are coming through. There are a lot of new young people coming through who have a very innovative 
um, ideas. And, and I think we need to ensure that we encourage those people. There's a lack of capital on their part, but we need to find uh, a way to capitalize these people and, and to push them to grow the economy. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. In news from the region, the unscheduled maintenance of two Liat aircraft, which led to several flight cancellations on Thursday, will not affect services during the Easter period. The assurance from Liat's Chief Executive Officer, Julie Rifford jones today, who says the airline had already put in place adequate arrangements to ensure smooth trips for that peak travel period. She made the comments after the island hopper cancelled flights from Barbados to St. Lucia, Barbados to Grenada, Barbados to St. Vincent and vice versa on Thursday. She says the airline has always emphasized the safety and comfort of passengers and the unscheduled maintenance will result in the aircraft being out of service for several days. The CEO says several adjustments had to be made to the flight schedule and the company hopes to return to its full flight schedule by next week. And on the international scene, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres says extreme climate events such as the recent cyclone Ide in Mozambique are becoming more frequent and will become even worse unless urgent action is taken immediately. He made the comments as he addressed the General Assembly high-level meeting on climate change and sustainable development today. Climate change is happening now and to all of us. Every week brings a new example of climate-related devastation. No country or community is immune. And as is always the case, the poor and vulnerable are the first to suffer and the worst hit. My heart goes out to the hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of people affected by the recent cyclone Idai in Mozambique, Malawi and Zimbabwe. Such events are becoming more frequent, more severe, and more widespread, and will become even worse unless we act urgently now. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.bobbylistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good evening.